Yeah, I think uh, 2016 was pretty interesting, and I think we learned two main things. Firstly, is that no one can call the polls, so you shouldn't really try. Um, I think that's proven with the, the, the pollsters, the bookies, uh, and, and the experts. So on the back of that, I think the thing that we found more interesting was the policy response um, by the monetary authorities or the, the new government authorities to the different situations on Brexit. So Brexit had a monetary response. Um, so in that environment, we basically trashed our currency, but we cut interest rates. So that was good for bond yields. Yields fell, prices went up, but obviously the currency went down. Whereas in the States, um, with Trump, the, the opposite happened. The dollar rallied very aggressively, and um, the bond market, the yields rose, so there was a kind of interest rate sell-off. So trying to anticipate the policy response of European elections next year, um, I'm thinking specifically France here, is probably where there'll be opportunities for our investors going forwards. The second one really is liquidity. Now, we, we've had a large push into US investment grade, which is a massive market, it's pretty liquid. And on the back of Trump, we had to reduce direct duration, and we took out over a year's duration, which equated to roughly 400 million worth of dollar bonds, which we managed to sell in two days. And that was liquid, it was fairly efficient, um, we didn't lose much money doing it. Um, the trade worked for us. Um, that could not have been done in the sterling corporate bond market, which is tiny, um, and there's our traditional ground. Sterling corporate bond markets, liquidity is as worse than ever, the market's shrinking at the margin. So we have to be on the run, we need to be in liquid, sensible names, reason to exist names, names we can trade. So if we do need to move the portfolios around, we can, and we proved that we did, and we're actually quite pleased with that. So having different pockets of liquidity in sterling euros and dollars, in investment grade and high yield and sovereigns, and in the low market in those currencies has given us more pools of liquidity than a conventional single asset class bond fund. Just prior to Trump, there was a small reforation rally going on in equities, and we've spoken about that on videos and, and writings. Then Trump has really pushed the reflation theme, and the equity market has jumped on that with the switch from defensive expenses to the cyclicals and the financials and bonds have sold off. Now, who knows, but we think at some stage that reflation theme may get a little bit tired because we're not convinced, um, nor are the strategists we speak to, that Trump can really invigorate the US economy meaningfully to justify the massive moves we've seen in equities and bond markets. So that reflation theme may fade, and who knows, we may get back to the deflationary themes which have played out for bond markets for years, and we've spoken a lot about. Short term, the reflationists have the upper hand, and I think that could run into April, May, maybe. Um, but beyond that, who knows, but we might be back to the deflationary secular stagnation themes or secular stagnation with a dose of um, extra stagflation potentially next year. The other big one is polit politics um, and the French elections, German elections, um, so on are going to be massive and a big focus for the, us and the team. That are obviously threats to the European projects and so on, but that also could throw up to opportunities and obviously we've learned a little this year in trading some of the election risks and strategies around it. Um, so there's always things to be doing in markets and that's what makes them so interesting. So I think the highest conviction positions going forwards really are the following. We, we like loans, senior secured, floating rate notes. Um, your first lien secured, you float over LIBOR, your short duration, you pay a decent yield, your low vol. So that appeals to us and we've got reasonably large allocations to loans already. Secondly, we like US high yield. So you want to be domestic facing, large cap, non-cyclical businesses, reason to exist. Shortest duration, unsecured, domestic focus, decent carry. Defaults will remain pretty low in the States. I, I think that's quite appealing. So a yield carry with short duration. And thirdly, some investment grade names, some banks, big global banks, reason to exist banks, um, and so on. What we're more shy of, I think rightly so, is emerging market credit is going to be tough with Trumponomics. I think uh, European investment grade is really at very tight spreads and the absolute yields are less than 1%, so it's really hard to make money there. Um, and longer dated investment grade, we will be in and out of, I think, subject to the reflationary and deflationary themes washing through the world. So basically, loans high yield and a sprinkling of investment grade. Yeah, Trump has made the bond manager grumpier. It's gonna to be tougher for the bond managers, um, and it's probably easier for the equity managers. As I said, that may reverse mid-year, who knows, but I think short term it's a tougher outlook for bond managers because there's going to be a little bit more growth and a little bit more inflation 
So we feel we're probably in a worse place as, as bond managers. Um, so we're generally pretty happy if we can achieve the running yield of the funds, and that's roughly 4% for the, the bulk of them. If we can achieve that for the clients, I, I think we're pretty happy. There will be opportunities, and we play duration long and short this year. So we've got to keep liquid, um, be sensible, and look for opportunity, but not force it.